Hey guys, OSG here with a new Patreon request. Grimjack, who joined my Patreon a couple of weeks ago, has asked me to do a video on C64 pesky games. Well, I have to admit that I had no clue what that was. A quick Google later I found that a friend of the channel, Robin from the 8-bit show and tell, knew all about them, so I have drawn on his knowledge to complete this request. So ASCII is the use of a standard keyboard character set that most of us will have seen in terminal programs. Oh, who am I trying to kid here? I don't know this shit, but I know a man who does, so over to Robin. Hi, it's Robin. OSG asked me to do a quick explanation of Petsky. I'll just run this little basic program. Petsky is these characters that are built into the ROM of the Commodore 64. We've got letters, punctuation, numbers, mathematical symbols, and all these graphics characters. Then they're all repeated again down here, but the pixels are inverted. These can all be arranged on the screen however a programmer would like, and you'll see some great examples in OSG's list of games that's coming shortly. But first, a little history. Way back in 1976, Commodore was creating the PET personal computer. They need a character set for it to store and display text for programming, word processing, and all that. They took an existing standard from 1963 called ASCII, which is essentially a code where numbers represent characters like letters or punctuation. For example, 37 is a percentage sign, while 65 is the letter A. In total, there's 128 codes, and this standard was made so that different computers can share data without the meaning getting all scrambled up. So Commodore modified ASCII for the PET, making it somewhat less compatible, but also doubling it up to these 256 characters, including extra graphics that could be used for games, art, charts, or whatever. This pet ASCII became known as Petsky, and then Commodore kept using it in their later 8-bit computers too. While the PET can only display Petsky graphics, the C64 can be programmed to display any combination of pixels. But still, some game developers on the 64 chose to use Petsky graphics out of convenience or just because they like the look of it. I sure do. Okay, back to OSG. Anyway, that's the history of Petsky, just to give this video some context, but the real request was for a list of best C64 Petsky graphics games. I'll just say that this list wasn't an easy one, as some of the games I had played loads of times I never even knew were Petsky, but after a discussion with Robin, he pointed me in the right direction, and a post on Facebook which named a lot of Petsky games. I then went and played all these games and came up with 10 great games that used Petsky graphics. So without more delay, let's take a look at the 10 best Commodore 64 Petsky graphics games in order of greatness. Kicking us off in 10th place, we have Sacred of Bastow Manor. This is one of six soft goal games that I have played whilst whittling down games for this list. It's a graphical adventure game that has a nice spooky atmosphere and great puzzles. Whilst it's not the best soft goal adventure on this list, I would be more than happy to play this all the way through. And those Petsky graphics are really nice too. In 9th place is Alien. Not to be confused with the sci-fi film game, this is the second game on the list by Softgold. All of them were very similar, as in graphical text adventures. Anyway, this is the best out of the six, with nice pesky graphics, great voice samples and an atmosphere that immediately pulls you in and keeps you playing, which is the most important thing on a text adventure for me. Okay. 
8th place is taken by Vega. So this game was originally released as a demo by Delvsid in 2017 for a competition and people loved it. Three years later in 2020 we actually got to play what once we could only watch when Atwood Studios released it as a playable game. It's very short i.e. one continuous level and an end boss but the way they have done it with the end score is a really great idea making it a challenge to improve your score each time. In 7th place we have Petsky Poker 2016. Card games on the C64 were 10 a penny and I played quite a lot of them so I wasn't really keen when I fired this up and then I started playing. Maybe a couple of hours passed and I was still hard at it building my money up as this is one quality poker game for the C64 and really as the Petsky char set contains card suits was sort of made for games like these. It's keys only though but it's really easy to pick up even if you haven't played poker before. Sixth place is taken by Ford Django. Again, a game that I had never heard of up until starting this list. It was released in 2017 by Dr. Terrors and we got some super smooth scrolling and huge Petsky graphics. I mean this game looks brilliant when you think that it's made up of the Petsky characters and I also believe it's a game that set Dr. Terrors off making the game that we will see in first position. Vags to Riches is in 5th position, so this is a game that I already knew as I had it in my video on mega hard C64 games. What I didn't know is that it's Petsky graphics, which is weird, as now I know what they are you can tell but back in the day I never questioned why they were weird. Anyway, like I say it's a hard one but also a classic for the C64. My advice is don't give up, watch your meters, pick everything up you can, eat and rest at every opportunity and you might just get somewhere in this game. In 4th place we have Tower of Rubble, what an absolute belter of a concept this game is and also what a rage inducing game it is too. The aim is to stay alive while Tetris type blocks fall randomly from the sky. Sounds easy right? Well it's not, it's a nightmare but it's one that will have you seeing one more go over and over until you finally start to climb the right set of blocks. I do warn you though, this is brutal with a capital B. Third place is taken by Attack of the Petsky Robots. So I'm surmising that most of you are here because you love retro gaming and systems, that you will have heard of the 8 bit guy. Let's face it, who hasn't? Well, he made a game last year called the Attack of the Petsky Robots, and it's not only a great game, but as you would expect from the title, uses Petsky graphics. I have to admit though that this version shown here isn't the C64, as I don't have it. It's the Commander X16 version, but they are almost identical, so I just went with this. Anyway, there's an enhanced version for the C64 too, if the Petsky graphics aren't doing it for you, with great music. So be sure to check out 8 Guy's video on this, I'll put a link in the description. Space Taxi is in 2nd position. This is one of the most mentioned games on all the C64 games lists I do. It's totally loved by the US gamers and the moment I played it which wasn't too long ago I was immediately hooked too. If this list had just been on best games this one would have been top but you will understand why it's not when you see the next one. Anyway this is a game that still plays great and is even one of my son's favourite games to play today.
And now, in first place, we have Digilio. Right, so let's just try and remember that this game is done using the Petsky Char set. Nothing more, which when you look at it, it's an absolute work of art. I'm sure you can see the likeness with Django, which was another game from Dr. Terrors. This one, though, is on another level. With great graphics and super smooth gameplay, yeah, it's flip scrolling, but it still works. And then there's the music, which makes this, as a Petsky game, the best there is for me. Okay that's it for this video, I hope you've learned something new like I have and check some of these games out if you haven't already. Thanks again to Robin, i put a link to his channel in the 8-bit show and tell, where if this has shown you something new then you will be astonished what he can do with some of these retro systems. Also thanks to Halls Falvey for his help with the games list. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content and if you would like to get a video request like Grimjack and your name in the end credits like these people going up the screen right now, get on over to my Patreon channel where you can pledge for as little as $1. Till next time, this is OSG, signing out.